Okay, uh, this is a video that describes the process for computing a stable ratio of capital expenditures to depreciation. A single number that you can use to compute the depreciation in the terminal year so that when you increase the or decrease the growth rate in the terminal year, you get a different uh, level of capital expenditures. Clearly something should be true. Clearly, if you change the terminal growth rate and you have more EBITDA because you have a higher growth rate, you need a higher level of capital expenditures to support that growth rate. Now, it's shocking, not really, but it is surprising that this very few models seem to make an adjustment in the capital expenditures in the terminal year that are consistent with the terminal growth rate. Now this uh, uh, file is stable capital expenditure ratio. It's of course in my the website called edbodner.com. You can find it in the section named stable ratios. You know, you can come become a member and get a badge. You can get your own badge, your own like, pin if you uh, if you become a member of this website. All right. Um, the um, so let's talk about if you'd like how to come up with these crucial numbers that can make a big difference in uh, valuation. The way uh, this file works is we start with the theoretical value. Now, since it's a corporate model, of course, not of course, but the basic proposition of a corporate corporation is it lasts forever, for on and on and on. It has an indefinite life. We could get philosophical about whether anything really has an indefinite life. But this is the problem. This is the assumption. So we make a model. And in our model, we put a historic period in this case. Let's say we have 10 years of financial data. And then we have a five-year projection period. And for some reason, we use 15% growth rate in both of those. And then in our long term, Forever and ever after that, we stop growing or we grow slow, more slowly at 4%. Now, uh, we'll come back to all these ratios later, but all the growth rates have an implication for various different ratios. Accumulated depreciation, this is what should say to uh, gross, uh, gross plant. And we have the net plant depreciation rate that's different for 15% than for uh, 4%. And we'll come back to this implied growth rate in just a little later. So we make a theoretical uh, long-term model. And in our theoretical long-term model, we um, compute the, the uh, EBITDA, let's say. And in our EBITDA, notice how in the yellow uh, um, five-year projected period is still at 15%, then, oops, we grow at 4%. Now, if we're going to grow at 4%, we probably have to have our gross plant, our factories, have to also grow at 4%. If there is some surplus capacity, of course, there should be some adjustments, but the whole idea is you get to the stable period and things just grow at your stable rate. So a gross plant... Oh, that was our return. They stabilized. And really importantly, the depreciation also just grows at 4%. Now, once we have all of these, and you can see how the ratios are stable for the beginning, and then when we have a change in growth rate, things kind of uh, change as well. So what we can do is take the present value of our EBITDA all the way for a long, long time. And we can take the present value of our capital expenditures and get the present value of our, our cash flow. 
okay and in this in this uh, example the only thing we really had to put is our whack and uh, we put a uh, whack we put of uh, 12 percent okay now if we uh, uh, put a um, if we made if we did something which would be criminal almost but if we just took the free cash flow in the terminal year that's all we had because we had a big level of capital expenditures we could take the free cash flow and then we multiply this by 1 plus g divided by k minus g left minus g right Okay, and then we do the same thing. 1 plus g divided by whack minus g, that's the value of the capex. Now, of course, those capex had a 15% growth rate, and when we change our growth rate, that should be going down. That's why it would be kind of crazy to just take the last years of capex and not make some kind of an assumption, and we get a completely different value. Okay, oops, the wrong way. Okay, now we could also use a user-defined function that will be in another uh, uh, video. And that user-defined function I call capex to depreciation simple. That doesn't account, if you notice the inputs for this one, it only has inputs for the life of the project, the growth of the project, and the... Uh, timing code. If you want to see a little bit how this works, this is in uh, depreciation functions. And in the depreciation functions, you can make a simple little analysis. You just have 100 uh, capex that just grows, then you have the opening, closing balance. Key thing here is to make a function for retirements using offset function. You go through one single life cycle. In this case, we have a 10-year life cycle. Notice how the ratio of capex, excuse me, divided by depreciation stays, stabilizes, as does the net plant depreciation. Now, instead of doing all that, you could just make a little function. And the way that function works is, whoops, kind of is here. I think I have this function here. No, I don't. Where is it? capex to depreciation simple. We just make our 100 capex, we go around the life, depends on if we use the closing or opening balance, and we just take the capex divided by depreciation at the end. That's that one. Now, when you uh, make that sort of adjustment, here's the problem. The problem is, if you have historic growth, capex in the future, don't only cover the 4% or 5% or 3% necessary to uh, notice as we go small, we have a bigger problem. They don't only cover the, the historic amount, I, I mean the, the amount to cover the new growth. They have to replace these capex that occurred in the past. And the past capex, well, they depend on the growth rate. And the pattern, if we had no growth rate in the past, they'd be flat. We'll look at that later. Okay? So, the last method doesn't only uh, makes an uh, adjustment, and this, uh, um, this number, okay, where are we? We're at this one. This number, now you see it's very different than, than this one. This includes inputs for historic growth, future growth, and here's why you need the WAC. If the, if the um, uh, uh, CapEx, the growth rate was different, then the timing, here, let, let's make, the, how about we make the, the, the growth rate lower? Let's make it 10%. Okay. Then you still have to replace all the CapEx, but we have a different pattern of, of capex and that pattern uh, of x valuation because it occurs at a different time which is why you need the whack and you put in the whack and we'll 
show you in a minute how that computes. Now, the other thing is you need the historic growth rate. Now, the advantage of this function, this magic function, that you could just add to any of your models, all you would have to do is go and find the function. I've given it to you in about 100, well, not 100, but a lot of different places. You just take this function. You could make an XLA file and do it fancy and, and put it in, in, you know, make it a kind of an add-in to your, your files. But you just take this function and you just copy this. And all you need is the historic growth rate, future growth rate, life plant, whack, and this beginning end of the year code. And, okay? You copy that into your file and then, whoopa, you get the the stable capex to depreciation which you apply in the terminal year okay and when you apply that in the terminal year uh, it reflects the the necessity of the making capex uh, to replace those old uh, uh, retirements now the one thing that is a little tricky is you need the historic growth rate. Now you can get that if you know what the in the the uh, historic period. If you know what the accumulated depreciation to net plant is, here's my proposition that you can then find. You do a, kind of a little goal seek, but you make your goal seek really flexible through a function. So you can derive the growth rate from simply the accumulated depreciation in the life of the project. Now, there's another uh, um, video that gets uh, deeply into that issue. Okay, so once you do that, you get the value of the capex. Now, notice that this value of the capex is almost by definition the same as this theoretical uh, long-term value of the capex right here. Okay. So that's the method. Let's just uh, uh, see what happens. You know, so if we make our difference between the historic growth rate and the future growth rate larger, then we're always going to get this mess if we don't make any adjustment. But the simple adjustment here, we've got a case where we have a 17% error. It's interesting in this case, it was 100% capex to depreciation. We understated the value by 17%. Okay, that's okay. And if we let's make this even higher, let's make it 20% uh, growth rate. And then we we understate it by 21%. If we make a, uh, uh, I should have uh, reset this. It didn't change anything. Let's make the WAC 15% uh, really, really high WAC. Then we get a 22% difference. Let's make it 8% WAC. Then we get a 14% difference. So the higher the WAC, the higher the uh, implication of this historic growth rate, because it's all about the timing of the, uh, of the, of the CapEx. Now, if we make the life of the plant longer, Let's make it a 30-year life. You know, that, then we have a bigger uh, difference. Look at this. We have a bigger difference. And we have a 19% uh, error. Okay? Whereas if we would only make the life uh, five years, um, we, we have a smaller, uh, a, a smaller adjustment to make. Okay? that uh, then we only have 12% error. So you can see what kind of uh, uh, things make a difference. Now, if we had zero growth in the past, I hope this one works, and zero growth in, uh, in the projection, now we don't have any difference. Oops. Um, I had to change this, excuse me, I had to change this to a, a 1% growth. In that case, it, well, there was a little problem with the divide. 
but all of the, all of the approaches uh, have the same value. So the difference in the approaches comes from when we change the uh, growth rates. I've already told you this, and when the growth rates for the history are more divergent uh, from the growth rates in the uh, in the past. Okay, and that is a uh, discussion of the key thing. Everything really in this one relates to this function, which is to find the growth, and this function, which is the key function, which is to find the stable level of capital expenditures to depreciation. And we'll use this in other uh, and other uh, other uh, videos later on, or whatever.